A portrait is a painting, a sculpture, or a photography in which the face and the expression is predominant. The intent is to show someone's personality and even mood. And exactly therefore I'm super happy for today because my guest is photographer Richard Pilnick. Hello Richard. Hi Eric. He's well known for his art. I, I can't even say photographer, for me he's an artist. He's uh, well known for, of course, portraits. He's also well known for his work in uh, yoga. He just uh, made a book about Ashtanga yoga, great positions, but that's for another day. And also well known for his artwork when it comes to trees and other plants and the ocean. But uh, I really want to talk to you about portraits because that is what a face reader is most interested in. And I heard that uh, your pictures have been seen in the National Portrait Gallery in London as well. So you know uh, what we're talking about here. Portraits for me are amazing because they, they, they can, they're able to, to catch someone's personality. But what does a portrait mean for you as a photographer? Thank you, Eric. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you uh, today. For me, portraiture is about the connection. It's about how the intimate relationship between photographer um, and subject, how that, that, how that connection works through just one image, but then also through time and then working with the relationship. But I feel that initially, for me, portraiture was a way to take me out of um, the comfort zone. It was a way to, to overcome confidence issues, you know, by, by working as a photographer, but then, in, in the portrait world, it's, you, have to, you have to have that ability to communicate and to kind of put yourself in that position. And to travel the world with, um, with my cameras is, you know, it's a blessing to, to take that journey and then interact in a way that you would never normally interact. Um, so there's, there's so many different facets for me what portraiture is, because it's, you know, you explore the world through the people that you meet. Um, so for me, a lot, of the, a lot of my early portraiture was, was that. It was my journey and it was the people I met along the way. Speaking about journey, I met you more than 10 years ago, I think 12, 14 years ago. And, you know, you're from the UK. I met you in Thailand first time. And uh, I experienced a guy that is more or less shy, already hiding behind the camera. And I was always surprised how easily you could open up people by just using your camera and asking for, for a shot, for giving, giving a face to, to make a photo of. For me as a face reader, uh, a very interesting experience because um, people do usually not open up that quickly. And you make it happen that people show their face on camera and then you see a face and you know a lot about this person. Even if you don't read faces, you feel something. What do you feel when you look into someone's face by making a picture? It's when you're when you're with the subject, you are waiting for that moment. And it's it's about um, it's almost in some regards, it's like a meditation. You're there it, in that present moment breathing and you're watching or you're talking or you're having a you know, you're having that that intimate moment. Mm -hmm. And then when the time is right, you press the button, um, especially, um, you know, today it's slightly different with with um, digital cameras, but everything that I was doing when we met and the, the way that you saw me working at that point, it was all on film, um, large format. So a lot of the time, you, you, once the camera's loaded, you have one picture. So it is, it's not about taking thousands and hoping that something works. It's about spending that time in that intimate relationship to then know that when it's right, you press the button once and then leave. When, when, you, when you do a portrait of someone, you think this is the authentic side of this person that this person show you or you have to wait for that for a long time or do you still have in the end a photo where you say well that was only 50 percent of what this person is really really stands for yeah i think the honest answer is that it shows their personality at that precise moment mm -hmm. so you could quite easily take a portrait of the same person over a year do it once a month or once a week and you would always see something slightly different because your your relationship with that person changes whatever's happening in their personal life will change so we will always work with a subject to try and uh you know to try and relax them to try and then bring them out of the mundane or out of the the stresses and strains of life 
but sometimes there will be, you know, if there is something ingrained, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a challenge. I'm sure people do portraits for different reasons. Yeah. Um, do they let you know what kind of reason they, that might be? Sometimes. Um, yeah, sometimes. And then this is when it comes down to, is it a commercial portrait or is it, um, is it a personal portrait? Is it something I'm doing for myself? Mm -hmm. um, and the interesting thing is, is when it's for me, um, it, I guess it shows more about my feelings of the world and, and my interpretation of what I see mm -hmm. when it's for somebody else, if it's a, if it's, um, if it's a commercial client or it's a, um, a personal client mm -hmm. who wants a portrait of themselves or their daughter. Mm -hmm. It's about capturing, um, capturing that moment of them that they can treasure for life or, you know, if, if there's uh, a family that wants to show their, how their daughters or sons are, are growing up and it's an annual thing. Um, and then you're always kind of looking to get a, a little bit more out of that personality. And that's when the relationship between a family can really help to create something even more special. Mm -hmm. Would you agree, and I hope you do, but would you agree that you can really, someone can really read a face by looking into someone's face and then get to know a lot more about this person's personality or the mood or maybe even health? And what do you experience? Um, did you become a face reader yourself maybe, or what is your experience about it? Uh, my experience is completely, you know, you look at a face and, and I, you know, you've, you've taught me a few things and it, I, it's something I really want to learn more about because I see as a photographer, what an invaluable tool that would be to understand, okay, what is the, what is the, 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 the characteristic of this person? Mm -hmm. Knowing, knowing that, or if you can see that there is health issues or, or there is stresses and strains, where's this coming from? And I think that that could really help build a, a rapport in a scenario where it's one-on-one -on -one as, a, as a portrait setting. Is there a most important feature in the face when it comes to the portrait? I, I guess it could be the eyes or is there something else? You know, I, I spoke with a painter. They said, Eric, we usually try to avoid hands in, a, in the picture because that's really hard to paint and the ears are always challenging. But for a photographer, is there uh, a main feature that you especially look for, something like this? Yeah, it's interesting that you say hands because once from uh, I worked for a long time in the fashion industry and obviously you see the way that the image is created and a lot of the time it the hands is the giveaway and it's how relaxed the subject is is the hands tell a huge story whether it's like this or like this so you can see in the in the final image with the hands about that relaxation but for me it's about the eyes um, and it's, you know, the eyes are the window to the soul. So it is um, a lot of the portraits that I do, especially for myself, wow. it's, it's engaging with them and having them really strikingly look yeah. through the lens. I understand. I, I, I don't like portraits where I see things like this, for example, um, you know, or, or, or like that. So that is always a little bit strange for me because what do you want to show with that? I mean, it shows something, body language, right to the face. Um, Okay, so it's the eyes, uh, happy because the eyes are the window of the soul, that's true. And also another interesting question for me is because I found out myself a few things about that, but I, I don't want to uh, influence you here. Are there regions on the planet, countries, culture, where it's easier to make uh, a portrait with the other side uh, than other ones? Um, yes, completely. And from, from, the, from the travel I've done, it's, you know, I love to be on the road. Um, and I've been journeying for probably the last 15 to 20 years. And that's not to say that I've been everywhere. I, you know, there's, there's still a hell of a lot that I want to explore. But India is a place where, or a country, where I've had um, the most incredible experiences as, as, a, as a photographer shooting portraits. And what's really interesting is not just a country, but I think the method in which you're shooting. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, the last time I went to India about three years ago, I found it a lot harder to take portraits. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's because be, they've, 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 there's so many more people now out with digital cameras and they, whether or not it's because they see it so much more or because they don't understand, but it, you, it, I found that the villages that I was going to, I had to spend more time mm -hmm. to build relationships before I could take pictures. Mm -hmm. Um, but because working on large format film, they can see, they see the difference in the camera in, without really knowing what that difference is. Um, and as soon as you put a large format camera, they just 
they, they, they prepare themselves and they, they, it's almost as though intuitively no, they know that, that it's, it's of importance, it's for a purpose mm -hmm. um, greater than themselves. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I like to think that the work that I've done portrait wise, it's, it's that window to the soul. It's giving myself an understanding of, of the world, but then hopefully to a, to a viewer of my work to, to escort them to a place they have never been to before. Yeah. Um, and I think that the beauty of, of looking at portraiture, especially if you're looking into regions, mm -hmm. you, you can really get a sense of, of space without seeing the way they live, but you can get a, you're able to, you're able to create your own life for them, so to speak. So instead of um, doing situational portraits where, you know, it's environmental, everything's in place, um, I like to, to to detach them from the background. So whether or not I find a, a wall or I, I, um, I travel with like canvases or building studios, it's a way to take them out of their setting mm -hmm. to show the true beauty mm -hmm. um, without having your eye or the, the, it's obstructed by something in the, in the peripheral vision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, my experience, and maybe that fits yours, is that it looks like to me that a lot of more people in Asia want to be seen in their authentic self and uh, therefore for me as a face reader it's very often very easy to attract people for a face reading. Um, in, in the western world a lot of people want to present an image and I mean for a portrait an image might be not exactly the tool that they uh, should use right because mm -hmm. a portrait can reveal a lot of things. Yeah um, and it can be very revealing and I think this is this is when it comes down to the, the personality of that. And some people even criticize, then what, that's me? I, I, that's not the photo I want to have. I want to look different, right? Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, because it, it, the, the, I actually had a, um, a client many years ago um, and it was really telling for me because she came to me and she said, um, and it was actually a yoga client, and she uh -huh. said, oh, I, I absolutely adore the asana pictures you did. Um, but there's something in the portrait, I just, I'm not, I, I can't look at it. Mm -hmm. um, but we still work together a lot. And then two years later, she, we, we shot another portrait and she then told me the reasons why. Mm -hmm. And what she was seeing in her face was the work she needed to do. She was seeing in her, it's almost as though she was intuitively face reading herself from seeing that there is a lot of self work that she needed to do mm -hmm. to get to the person that she felt that she should be. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the second portrait, she, she was absolutely ecstatic about, and she was like, that's, that's me. And it's almost as though she'd done the work and then she'd got to that position of, okay, now it's me. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's quite interesting to see how, as a, as a viewer of, of your own face, how you could also use this as a tool to understand your own journey. Last thing I want to talk with you about is the development of portraits. So I researched a little bit. So I don't even have to research to know that in Stone Age there was no one doing a portrait of himself because they made pictures of mammoths and other animals they were hunting. Mm. But uh, already found out that 600 before Christ, um, even 2000 before Christ, there have been sculptures where you could see, oh, there is a mood visible. But definitely 600 before Christ, you see first kind of pictures or sculptures that uh, are obviously a portrait because it shows the personality of this person. And that developed over the years. Um, and well, great paintings we're talking about. Everybody knows Mona Lisa and, uh, and others we're talking about. Now, how is this going further and further? Because it seems to me like this interaction between the photographer or the painter and the subject, as you said, um, change totally. We were also talking about the selfie culture. Mm. What is your point of view about that? Um, so there's still though, you, you can really see how things are changing, how the, not only the image is changing, but the image of the self is changing. Mm. Um, and I think that the biggest, um, the biggest significant change that we've had in the last, arguably 15 to 20 years is the selfie. Um, and you know, when people are taking thousands and thousands of pictures of themselves, um, all over the world, it's like, it, that is a, a completely different reason for the, the, for the image. And I think that um, it always comes down to why. 
Why am I doing this? Why do I want this picture? Why am I taking this picture? Um, and I think this is, this is actually a fundamental question we need to ask in every area of our life is why? Why am I doing this thing? And there's so many reasons. You know, you could want a portrait of, of your child because you want to remember that moment. Mm -hmm. You want to remember their first birthday or their um, bar mitzvah or whatever it may be. Um, but then you also might want to, a, a more of a personal journey of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and that could be a, a portrait of yourself once a year to see how you've aged. Um, you know, it could be working with a, with a client who wants to showcase the business through the, the people that work there. That's the soul of the company. Um, so it comes down to, I would say, why? And then once you've got the why, it's what tools would I use to create that? So then it would be, okay, here's my why. I want to I create this moment. Now, am I going to do that myself with a selfie or am I going to employ a photographer to do that mm -hmm. for me? And then am I going to shoot digital? Am I going to go to film? Would you employ a photographer or would you do a selfie in the sense of you use your cameras and do the self shot? Well, the interesting thing is, is the, you know, it's, it's the name as, as a non photographer, it's a selfie. You're taking a selfie. Mm -hmm. um, but through the ages, photographically, it's photographers have always shot self-portraits mm -hmm. um, so I think that it, it comes down to a completely different thing because especially historically with um, with self-portraits mm -hmm. it would be fully staged mm -hmm. um, and they would be using an air release so they'd have a long cable with um, with a like a squeezer on um, uh, sque to squeeze the trigger mm -hmm. um, so then you're really kind of focusing and you would get prepared and then you would take the you would you would press when you felt yeah. connection that could even work further where you could have mirrors behind the camera so you can be looking at yourself mm -hmm. to make sure, okay, is this, is this in line? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, a, a self-portrait is the modern day selfie. Well, we come to an end. Before we do that, I really have to tell people that you work everywhere. And he did portraits in Mongolia, in India, in China, in Thailand, in Indonesia, in, in, the, in the UK, in the USA, everywhere in Europe, he traveled the world. And for me, it was amazing. See, I have goosebumps to see how he could really open up people and they showed their true inner self. And that is a different kind of portrait than a selfie, that's for sure. So my last question, Richard, is what do you want to do when you take a portrait of someone? What is your intention? What is your goal? Is there something that you have in mind at that right moment? At that moment that I take the picture, <laughs> my mind, I try and keep my mind clear. Good. Um, so this is when it comes down to almost like a meditative process because you're with the subject, you're reading the energy, you're kind of, you're breathing together. And then that's when you, when you feel that moment. But I think that what precedes that is and I, you, you told it me, you know, it's my, my tagline is uh, I'm the can opener. Um, and I find it quite beautiful to now know that's what you see in my face, to then take this back through the work that I've done. And it's, there is a way, and I guess you, you, you would say it's written on my face. And I just intuitively, there is a way to be with somebody who I've never met before, but yet we just have this intimate relationship for that moment. And it's like there is a perfect synergy. It's all, almost in the sense that they know, they know intuitively that the, there is a reason for us to be together. And what is that message? What's the, what's the voice behind that? Thank you. The face reveals the personality, the mood, the health, love, anything. A portrait might do even more. It can reveal even the soul. So your inner source and therefore it's very interesting, important, intriguing to study a portrait here and there. In the next interview, we will talk about that. Portraits of a soul.